everybody, Mean Dean back at you with another video, and this is the big one, video number 50. And as I promised, I am going to take the tasting portion of the Master Somalia's exam right here. You can see in front of me there are six wines, three whites, three reds. My wife has poured, she poured these four, I Coravan these two, there was no indication on the cork or anything what the wine is, I have no idea. So, this is going to be exciting and really difficult, and I'm going to make a complete ass of myself, so you're going to enjoy that, aren't you? That's fine. So, the only aids I have right now is a clock, a timer for 25 minutes, 25 minutes and 15 seconds, so I can give myself a bit of a countdown, and the list of examinable grape varieties. So you can't, like I said, it can't be anything. Um, it's a pretty big list. That's the reds, and that's the whites. But it's most of the stuff you'd expect, you know, Cabernet from just about anywhere normal in the world. Cab Franc from the Loire Valley, Ooh, that, would, that would probably throw me for a loop. Carmenere from Chile, Gamay Noir from Beaujolais, Grenache and Grenache blends, Malbec Merlot based blends from France or the USA, that might throw me. I don't get a lot of, I don't get a ton of Malbec from the United States. But it does also say California or Washington. Ooh, she threw like a Washington Merlot in there, that would be mean. Uh, Sangiovese from Italy, Syrah from the Rhone Valley, Australia, USA, Tempranillo from Spain, Zinfandel from the States. Anyway, it's all, all stuff I'm fairly familiar with on the white side. Really nothing that I hadn't, don't drink from time to time. Um, Torontes from Argentina, not, I've had that once or twice, I wouldn't, haven't had that one very often, so hopefully she didn't pick that one. Anyway, so here we go. So it's 25 minutes. I'm going to start the countdown now at 25.15. When it gets to, to 25.0, I'm going to start. So give me 10 seconds, 9 seconds to calm my nerves a little bit. Uh, and it's 1 to 6, right to left. You see the bottles are behind me there. So I will do a, oh, I'm going to write, hang on. I had a pen. I know I had a pen here. So I can write my conclusions down so I don't have to rewatch the video to remember what I called them. Here we go. I'm already 10 seconds into it. All right, number wine number one is a white wine. Uh, slight golden hue, star bright. Uh, on the nose, the wine is clean, fruity, pear, apple. A little bit of tropical fruit. Not a lot of separation of meniscus. It's a young wine. See. Uh, palette confirms the nose. It's pear, it's apple, it's young wine. Viscosity is medium plus. Alcohol is medium. Tannins are no tannin. Um, this is it's a lot of fruit. It's all pear, apple, a bit of nectarine. Okay. Uh, hmm. Wow. So what I think this is, it can't be because that, that wouldn't even be on here. I know that for sure. So I'm going to have to hmm. Okay. So I don't know. Um, this wine is from the New World. This wine is from the United States, it's from Oregon, and it's Pinot Gris. Yeah, I'm sure it's none of those things. On to wine number two. Oh, okay. Uh, wine number two is a white wine, day bright, uh, hints of, just a tiny hint of green at the meniscus there. It's a little bit old. Oh, sorry, this is uh, current vintage 20, uh, 20, probably. 29 or 20. Very, very new wine. This wine is 
older than that one, no evidence of gas or sediment uh, or no flaws. It's a little bit of nuttiness on the nose, a little bit of butterscotch, caramel, citrus, definitely some oak. Okay, if this isn't Chardonnay, uh, we'll see. Um, a little fruitier on the palate than on the nose. Um, a little bit of Meyer lemon. Tropical fruit like a pineapple, guava, papaya. Not, it's not as oaky. It doesn't taste as oaky. It doesn't taste as Chardonnay-ish on the palate as it do on the nose. So I don't think there's as much oak as I thought. So viscosity's medium, alcohol's medium. Acidity's medium. So I think we've got here conclusions, possible grape varietals include Chardonnay, Chenin Blanc. I, I don't get that lanolin woolly quality you might get with Chenin Blanc. I think it's got to be Chardonnay. Um, I'm going to check where Chardonnay can be from here. There's a lot of it. France, USA, anywhere. Australia. It's not from France. It's definitely New World. Okay, so this is a New World wine. Did a Chardonnay. I'm going to say it's Australia. 2016 from a high quality producer. That's amazing. Okay, wine number three. How much time I got left? Oh, my thing went off. Come on! 1947. Okay, so I'm on my pace. Oh, wine number three is uh, white wine, star bright, uh, golden, like a medium straw color. Uh, lots of tropical fruit. Here's your lanolin. Here's your a williness. There's like a like the fresh open can of tennis balls. <laughs> or what did the uh, what did Ian say? Uh, freshly cut garden hose. Whatever the hell that is. So. Yeah, like it's it's definitely. Uh, woolly. Palette confirms the nose. Um, a little bit of tropical fruit, but a lot of the uh, secondary tertiary characteristics that would indicate this is definitely, almost certainly, Chenin Blanc. Uh, this is another New World wine. This is uh, Chenin Blanc from South Africa, uh, So uh, I feel pretty good about those. I'm sure I'm holding around all three of them, but I'm happy with my call at least at this point. We go to the reds. I got 17.45 left. All right, red wine. Red wine number four is a red wine. Uh, what do we got here? Medium intensity of aromas. It's a dark purple color. No, it's like a medium purple color with a. Gets a little red, a little orangey at the meniscus. A little bit of separation there. I'm gonna say it's probably four to six years old. I'm 
medium, medium minus intensity of room, but it's really not jumping out at me. Okay, I'm gonna skip that. I'm gonna come back to that. Here's number five. Number five is a red wine. It is uh, red with a orangey hue. More separation of meniscus on this one. This is probably, I'm gonna say, five to seven years old. It's not really, really old, but I think it's about five to seven. Oh, I got red cherry right off the bat here. Mm. A little earthy quality. Like a decaying earth, but not uh, just slightly decaying, like not, uh, not real, real old. A little bit of black fruit as well. Again, medium intensity of aroma, not really intense. Uh, medium plus viscosity. Yeah, it's, uh, it's not saying to me. Let's see. How the wine is dry, bone dry. Uh, tannins are medium plus. Acidity is medium plus. Bone dry. Okay. Mm. That's a red fruit. Um, some dried red fruit, dried strawberry, dried raspberry, dried cranberries. Include San Jovese. Hmm. Um, yeah, San Jovese. I'm gonna stick with that. So this wine is from the Old World. This wine is uh, from Italy. It is San Jovese. Uh, probably. Probably, I'm gonna say this is like a Rosso di Montalcino. Um, I said like it's five to seven years old, eh? so I'm going to say 2015 Rosso Montalcino from a high quality producer. Okay, wine number six. I'll go back, I'll go back to four first. Let's see if four is giving me anything yet. Nothing. <laughs> okay. Let's go back to wine number six. Open. All right. Number six is a dark garnet color with a little bit of uh, separation of meniscus. It is. Uh, four to six years old, probably. Uh, mm, okay, a little bit of funk there. Um, mm. Okay, on the, on, the, on the nose I'm getting some black fruit, a little bit of funky mushroom. Dill. American oak. Okay, well, this is taking me somewhere. Let's see. Okay. Mm. On the palate, the wine is dry. Tannins are medium plus. medium possible red varietals include Tempranillo the acidity is only medium medium plus Tempranillo possibly more low 
Sangiovese again? I don't think so, though. Okay, yeah. Um, the, Amer the dill on the nose leads me to American oak. Where do they use American oak? Rioja. This wine is from the old world. What time I got? 11 minutes. Good. This wine is from Spain. This is Rioja Tempranillo. Um, 20. A taste older than it looks. A taste and smells older than it looks. So I'm going to say. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say it's older than I thought it was. It's 20, 20, 2013. Tempering of Spain. Okay, five done. Eleven minutes. I get eleven minutes left to get something out of this one. I'll probably go back and change all my wrong guesses. All right. Okay. There's a little something. A little red cherry there. It is. This wine is well. It's a red wine. At least I'm getting that one right. I'm getting the colors right. See, I'm not new at this. Um, thin, well, that's a medium thin grape, I think. A little bit of red cherry. <laughs> Starting to open a little, but it's still really a uh, medium, medium minus intensity of aromas. Okay, well, I'm going to taste it now and see if that helps. What do you got here? Tannins are medium. Scotty's medium. Alcohol is medium minus to medium. One dry. No real evidence of new French oak. It might be a little bit of oak there, but it's not in your face. Possible grape varietals include Cabernet Franc, Pinot Noir, Gamay, Nebbiolo, maybe. I'm not comfortable with any of those four. Oh, oh I did it again. I'm not I'm paying enough attention when my phone goes off. Cost me valuable seconds. Seconds matter. Nine minutes left. Okay. It's intense red fruit on the nose. I'm not intense, but I mean, what I'm saying is all I'm getting is really is red fruit. A lot of a red, like a red cherry, and uh, maybe a drying red cherry, almost like a maraschino cherry, but not quite as sweet as that. There's not a whole lot else going on there, to be honest with you. I'm just going to quickly go over this. If it was Nebbiolo, it would have to be from Italy. I think. Gamay Noir would be Beaujolais, Sherd, Grenache, and Grenache based blends from the Rhone in Australia. I've had like one Grenache based blend from Australia in my life. I don't think that's what this is, but I could be wrong about that. I don't think it's Merlot. It's not Barolo for sure. I wonder if it can be Barbaresco. <sighs> this is a tough one. Okay. Good thing I got eight minutes left. I might have to drink this wine for eight minutes until I figure out what the hell it is. Tracy bought these wines at uh, a liquor store I've never been in, ever. But we were out Christmas shopping a little before Christmas, so I have no idea. It's a Liberty wine, so I know basically what the kind of stuff Liberty wines carries in, and their, their uh, portfolio is. Large, so it could be just about anything. I think it would have all these wines in there, but this particular Liberty Wines in Lenny, I've never been into it. Yeah, it's just. Mm. 
it's just a little bit, I'm not going to say bland, bland is not a good word for wine, it's not bad wine, probably needs food, but it's just, one of those wines is kind of just there, you know what I mean? And I think it's too, I mean, if it's Pinot Noir, it could be Pinot Noir from a, you know, a cheaper Pinot Noir maybe. But I think that tannins are too intense for it to be Pinot Noir, unless it's a brand new Pinot. Let's see, it is a new wine. It's probably 2017 or 18. I, I, at this point, I can't even necessarily nail, nail down whether it's New World or Old World. I'm gonna rule out Pinot Noir. I think the tannins are just too intense for that. It's not it's not burgundy or something like that. Let me check again. Where Pinot Noir can be from there on the list. France, Burgundy, the Cote d'Or. No way. It was a California, Oregon. I've had a lot of California Pinot. They don't taste like that. Oregon, no, I don't think so. New Zealand, Central Otago, Marlboro, Mar uh, Martinboro. I have really enjoyed the Central Otago Pinot Noirs I've been, that I've had. I don't know about the other two regions that well, but I'm going to rule that out. The Loire Valley. <sighs> no, I'm going to throw Cabernet Franc out too. Uh, so I think what I'll leave me with now is the Beaujolais. Could be Southern Rhone, Grenache based blend, but I don't get those. Grenache almost has a sweetness to it that I don't think. Four and a half minutes left. It's an okay wine. It's nothing that's knocking me over. Maybe it'll get better. It's funny, we'll see how all six of these drinks, well, four of them anyway, these two are core van, so they can stay in the fridge at some point. Be drinking these for over the next day or so. Probably starting with this one. I think this is the one that was the red. There was a screw cap, so I'm sure we'll be drinking that this afternoon. Mm. Okay, so I'm mean, gonna. I, I can. I can rule out the Cabernet. I can rule out Cap Sauvignon. I can rule out Malbec. I can rule out Zinfandel. Um, yeah, you know, I can rule out the Italian blend. It's not. You know, it's not about Pocacello or anything like that. I can rule out Carmenere. I think it's Merlot. I think it's not enough. Not enough evidence of any oak. There's no, no vanilla, bacon, spices. It's not Merlot. Long time left. Did I do it again? Yeah, I did. Come on. I'm losing seconds here. Three and a quarter. Okay, I'm back. Would you believe, right after I said three and a quarter, I get a message on my screen saying that my hard drive was full. So I paused the timer at three minutes and 13 seconds, and I deleted a whole bunch of stuff so I can actually record the rest of this video and I'm going to get back to it now and I'm going to resume at 3.13. Okay, now, so I'm still here, if I sit here for two or three more hours this might open up to give me an idea what it is. All right, so here's what I'm going to do here. I've got three minutes left, maybe just another second or so. Okay. So this could be maybe Pinot Noir from one of the uh, New Zealand regions I'm not familiar with. I don't think so though. So I am going to say this is a New World wine. I'm going to say this is from Australia. 
It's a Grenache Blaze Blend. I don't get a lot of pepper for that. I don't think it's a GSM. I don't much Syrah in it, but I'll get it wrong. Now, that was on here, right? Grenache and Grenache Blaze Blend. Okay, so I'm not going to say it's a blend. I'm just going to say it's Grenache. It's Grenache from Australia, 2018. One more sip, and then I've got two minutes left. That's not Grenache. <laughs> I have no idea what that is. Uh, okay, so i got a minute and a half left. I'm going to now review... Um, no time to go back and change it. I'm sure I'm probably wrong on six of these, six of six, but I'm just going to stop it. I'm going to pause it at 160 left. I got extra time. And I'm going to pull and I'm going to tell you what they are. I'm going to, we're going to reveal it with you. Wine number one, I called a, a Pinot Gris from Oregon, uh, USA. <laughs> I'd be pretty stunned if my wife actually bought a Pinot Gris from Oregon. Even she was buying it for this tasting, but still. Uh, let's see how far off I am. It is a Riesling from Alsace. Wow, okay, I didn't get any any Riesling characteristics there. So I, I couldn't have been much farther off here. That would be tough to have been much more wrong. Yeah. Okay. So that was uh, price tags on it, thirty six ninety nine Riesling from Alsace France. Okay. So a big zero on that one. Line number two. This is the New World Chardonnay from Australia, twenty sixteen. I think, it's, I think it's Chardonnay. Oh my God! It's Albarino. Rias Bichus. I don't get, see, I didn't get the sea spray that would have led me to Rias Bites on that one. Uh, but I did say that's a good wine, and that's a good wine. I like that better than the Riesling. Okay, number three. So far, I'm really over two. I'm not even in the right world. I'm in the wrong world twice. Again, new world. Chenin Blanc, South Africa. Sauvignon Blanc from where? New Zealand. What? Like, New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc should be the easiest thing. It's usually, you smell it, and two, two seconds after you smell it, you got cat piss, and it's the easiest wine in the world to guess. It doesn't smell like this at all. It's got all the qualities of a nice South African Chenin Blanc. Wow, 0 for 3. At least I hit the right world on this one. I can taste that one again. Yeah, well, see, now that I know what it is, it tastes a little more like Sab Blanc. But the acidity's still not as high as I would have thought. Okay, well, all right, so here it is. Here's the big one, number four, which I had no idea what it was. <laughs> Can't possibly be an Australian Grenache. Oh, okay, so it's a cheap Pinot Noir from Burgundy. I sure it's yeah. Bourgogne Pinot Noir Lace Ursulines 2016. I thought it might be a cheap Pinot Noir. It's, it, it's, it's not a very good one, I don't think. We'll see. See if it opens up at all. The producer is, I don't know who this is, Jean-Claude Boisset Lace Ursulines 2016. But it's one of those burgundy ones. It's not ill. It's not like a village or anything. It's just simply burgundy. So, uh, so I could, again, I get the wrong world. I'm, I'm the o for th I'm, o for, I'm one for three, four on the worlds. Like that should be the easiest to get old world, new world. But at least I was thought that might have been Pinot. Okay, back to the old world for Italy. Well, okay. All right, well, yeah, I got almost right. Uh, it's Nebbiolo. 
uh, Italy, Nebbiolo Dalba, 2017, so I missed the rule by a couple, but $46.99 was the price. Le Quecce Nebbiolo Dalba. So, at least I was on the ballpark there. That's the closest I've been so far. Italy, it screamed Italy to me, but it didn't say, I must say it screamed more San Giovese than Nebbiolo, but, no. Oh. I told you guys, this is not easy. And number six, I said, was Old World Rioja from Spain. It's got to be, right? Or not. Beaujolais from Julianes. Wow. This is, obviously, there's, see, I'm smelling dill, which is American oak. There's no way they're using American oak in Beaujolais. Oh, my God. He still got the old world, right? At least, uh, like even after smelling this, I think it's still it's still Rioja, 2015. So I was closer on the year there. Chateau Fuisse, 2015, Juliana, Beaujolais, so Gamay. All right, I'm sorry, but that's still real. <laughs> I mean, even, you know, usually when you know what the wine is, it, t it changes things for your, you know, the brain, but this one is still real. Wow. I got three or four real houses that I could pull them up. They'll smell exactly like this. Wow. Okay. Well, these two are core events, so I'll put those back in the fridge and we'll enjoy the bottle at some point. And, uh... Wow. So, as I expected, I stunk. I, if I, this was the, the Master Somali exam, I would have failed with a... Now, they don't tell you what you did wrong. They don't tell you what the wines are. So that's kind of why this was fun, because I get to see how bad I did. And I did terribly. Like, this is... It's tough to have done much worse than this. I got... I only got the world right in three of six. Just If, if the only question was old world or new world, I only went three for six. And that's the easy part, usually. I didn't nail the grape once. I was pretty close on this one. Maybe I'll send it. So I was pretty close on one. And I was way off on uh, one, two, all the whites, really. Oh, at least this, this one's... I'm sorry, but this is a very odd Sav Blanc for... New Zealand. Even as I smell it now, I still think it's Chenin Blanc. So, okay, so I'm going to give myself half a mark for this one because that's not a terrible call. This is a pretty good call. Not great, but it's a pretty good call. And this is a perfect call because this is clearly Rioja in a Beaujolais bottle. Okay, so I'd give myself one and a half out of six here, maybe, uh, for all of this. And that's not real good. Uh, but, as I said before, this is hard. Um, no matter how much wine you drink, and if you watch, if people like, as you watch the Psalm films, I hope you have, um, they, they go into this blind tasting, and you can see these master sommelier candidates, in fact, the guys that passed the exams, really way off on some wines. Not as far off as I was, because, you know, this is amateur hour, but um, way off. So this was fun. These are actually six wines I've never had before, so I've got to give the wife serious props for finding wines um, that I would, and, and and they're all pretty good. And I'm not sure about this one. We'll drink this today, the, the Pinot Noir. Uh, let's see. This one doesn't have a price tag on it, so I think, if, if memory serves, she had one she had bought previously that had been sitting in the fridge for a while. Um, so I think she probably bought these five on our, on our trip, and this one was in there from before. Because um, she had bought a few just for random blind tastings, and I think this is one. This is that. Because I don't think she'd go out of her way to buy a. Van de Bourgogne, Nuit Nuit Saint Georges, Cote d'Or, France. I mean, it's not horrible, I and mean, it's not plonk. It's not terrible. Uh, so over the next couple of days, we're going to drink these four, and uh, I will let you know how good they are. I I, I really quite like the Alberino. I should have got this too. I like Alberino and I drink enough of it to get it. But boy, that's not like Chardonnay. 
So she didn't give me a single Chardonnay. She thought that'd be too easy. But I smelled this for one second and I went, oh, that's Chardonnay. Well, there we go. So that is it. That is my Master Sommelier exam. I failed. I am not a Master Sommelier. Not to mention the fact that I'm not even enrolled in the program. I'm not a Sommelier, uh, average Sommelier, a good Sommelier, a Master Sommelier, and a Sommelier at all. Um, but this was fun. I enjoyed this. I'm going to do this again, maybe a year from now or so, when I get better at this. But yeah, she should get the wife to do it. <laughs> yeah, she won't do that. But anyway, um, that was a lot of fun. I cannot believe that was Riesling. Wow. Anyway, so that's it for today. I'm going to put this video up there and drink this wine. This uh, probably average for a while while I'm doing it. I hope you all had a wonderful New Year's. We sure did. As always, stay safe out there. This uh, thing going around isn't over yet, but we're getting there. And uh, drink great wine. Thanks for watching. See you soon.